Welcome back people. In this week's video I have a DAF LF in with an intermittent DAS communication issue and my choice of diagnostic tool for this video is gel test. We can start by getting this plugged into Leyland's finest free floating OBD socket and checking for power on the vehicle interface. With power established as usual our first point of call is confirm the customer's concern. Looks like I'm going to have to work for it to induce this fault today. Many rotations later, we can finally confirm the customer's concern, which is loss of comms to the DIP, which stands for DAF Instrument Panel. On to JAL test. With our vehicle easily identified via the auto identification feature, we can perform a quick main system scan to highlight any active errors we may have in the relation to our comms issue. While a large DTC error account is always a good indication for you to follow on faults that aren't active, if you can induce the fault and scan for active DTCs, even the apprentice can fix it. And here we go, 34 instances of CAN communication errors to the steering wheel switches and 83 instances of hardware or software issues on ICANN. Time for my favourite part of the job, education. I've gone into VIC, which is Vehicle Intelligence Center, to be able to pull up the topology diagrams here. As you can see, this is the hub of the truck network-wise, passing data from various nodes on different networks between one another. As we scroll down here, we have the ICAN, which stands for Information CAN. Now, the only things that are on ICAN in LF is the DIP and the SWS, which are our steering wheel switches. Hence the end resistors in the steering wheel switches and the VIC. But this diagram has a fundamental flaw to it, which is it's missing the clock spring, which is what we're going to investigate today. Well, let's get this stripped down. Luckily, we're blessed with no airbag on this, so we can get the centre out no problem. It would appear someone's been in here before looking at this, so we need to get the cowling off above and below the steering column to get to the clock spring. Now I've already tested for resistance here and at the steering wheel switches which was correct. A quick reference mark to make sure I can easily refit this later in the correct position. This rubber bush wasn't always fitted to vehicles and is available separately from DAF if you're doing this job and it's missing. As you can see it's best to have this fitted than have this all floating about loose. This is the steering wheel extractor tool from DAF, part numbers on the side if you want one, or have my own version in the shop which you can just run in with a gun. It doesn't take much and the steering wheel comes loose from the column, revealing the two torque screws holding the cowling on. And that's all we need to do to access this clock spring. We have three screws here to remove to get this loose. and an electrical plug here which links the steering column harness to the clock spring. Now for some testing. As usual I have the wiring harnesses out, links in the description if you want this set of four harnesses for testing and we're going to try and get this to fail with our friend continuity. We have four wires to test here, power ground and can that go to the steering wheel switches. Yeah. 
So I'm going to hope for the best here and see if I can get this to fail on me. If you've never seen inside a clock spring, well, here you go. All it is is a loose coil of wire ribbon where I hope somewhere I can identify the fault. We have various marks from where this has been rotating but without any obvious signs of failure. I gave up looking as I've been told time is money. I guess I best spend an hour coiling all this back up then. Another test you could carry out is to just bypass the clock spring entirely to confirm that the component was faulty. With the testing we've carried out I'm happy to put my neck on the line and say it was the clock spring that's at fault. So. Here's the new one. With tape and an orange locking tab on this, you would think you would need to do something very important, like consult the manual. Something I try and live by, but today I'm eating humble pie on this job, which we'll see in a minute. It helps if you plug it in first, doesn't it? But with the screws fitted in the clock spring, I can start to reassemble the steering column cowling. Funny how this comes out so easily, but always fights you going back in. I swear this thing expands when you take it off. I can then get the screws into this, and then I can forget how to clip the bottom of the cowling on properly. So now I can finally take this locking tab off, as I've not turned the clock spring during refitment, I've not moved the steering column, and I've marked the steering column for refitment. This couldn't have gone any better. Except, I didn't check the wheels were straight first. Fuck! Building this up as it is, and just turning the steering wheel straight afterwards could have caused this clock spring to break on full lock, as it would have been wound one whole steering wheel revolution out. So I used a pair of mole grips for a steering wheel to straighten the steering up, and with a piece of humble pie later, I can crack back on. With the rubber bushing in now, we can apply the Loctite and torque this nut up to 46 Nm so the steering wheel doesn't fall off, and then we can finally refit the steering wheel switches back into the original positions. With the centre back in the steering wheel, we can check our dash to see if it's still got communication issues and also refresh jowl test to check if the fault in the VIC has gone from active to inactive. As you can see, the customer's concern has been rectified, comms have been resolved and with the DTC inactive, we can do some good housekeeping and erase all the DTCs from the various ECUs. With a quick road test, this vehicle was returned to the customer I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have, drop me a like, hit me up in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.